Hello, welcome back. Uh, my name is Sosale Mohana. I'm a teacher of mathematics. I've taught A level maths for a long time. And I thought I would uh, spend some time discussing the general angle and the rate. That means, you know, so far we have been talking up to GCSE generally, at best, you go up to 180. Or generally, we talk between 0 and 90, the acute angle. And some cases, obtuse angle. So, I want to talk of a general angle. So, we are in uh, topic 5, trigonometry. Then, I will put it as uh, trigonometric ratios. of angles more than 90 or less than 0 and related concepts. Well, to understand this, we need to go back a bit. You know, I want to go out of this Sokatoa business in the sense that I'm not saying Sokatova is wrong. No, 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 no. But the concept of opposite side, I want to broaden our horizon instead of wearing a blinker, which is a right angle triangle. Meaning, all of you know the unit circle, correct? Circle, center 0, 0, radius 1. Of course, right? That is 1, 0. That is 0, 1. That is minus 1, 0. This is 0, minus 1. That the origin, that the x axis, that the y axis. If I measure an angle like this, it's a positive angle. If I measure an angle like this, it's a by convention. The way your clock goes or your wristwatch goes, of course, these days is all digital watches, I know, but if you have a wristwatch, or if you have a clock, or if you go and see the big, big Ben, it's all clockwise. That will be a negative angle. Whereas if you go anti-clockwise, it's a positive angle. People who do physics or who do mechanics know when we do clockwise moments or negative, anti-clockwise moments or positive. Okay. Let's assume there is a point P. Uh, let's call this position which keeps moving on the unit circle in an anti clockwise direction. Remember, the radius of this circle is always 1. So, wherever the point P is, the distance of P from origin is always 1. I am looking at the coordinates of P, but I don't want to use x and y. At this point P, do you agree, it is 1, 0. The horizontal displacement is 1. The vertical displacement is 0. Suppose P is here. Then, if I were to look at the horizontal and vertical displacements, do you realize that would be the horizontal displacement? Oops, I should have used the same green color. Doesn't matter, I'll make it green. And the vertical displacement is the red color. So, if I were to join OP, if I were to join OP, and if I were to call that angle as theta, do you realize this is 1? Sine the, let's assume the coordinates of P are X and Y. That is Y, that is X. What is cos theta based on your Sokatoa? Adjacent is X, hypotenuse is 1. So, do you agree X is cos theta or I can say the horizontal displacement is cos theta. In fact, that's a better way of remembering cos and sine. 
as a particle moves on a unit circle the horizontal displacement is cos theta and the vertical displacement which is y is i'll write it vertically sin theta now let's see what happens as p moves from 0 to 90 very interesting this for discussion so p moves on the unit circle from let's call this point as a let's call the point as b from a 1 0 to b 0 1 theta increases from theta increases from 0 to 90 I am going to use the color coding so that we are consistent. Cos theta is the horizontal displacement. Look, at A, the angle is 0, cos theta is 1. That is 1. As you go further, uh, suppose I take a couple of more points, should I? Yeah. Let me take a position P here. See the color coding. I am interested in the color coding. If I were to draw the horizontal displacement, if I were to draw the vertical displacement, do you realize the horizontal displacement or cos theta at that, let's call this as P1, let's call that as P2. At the point P1 is less than 1, so it's decreasing. The value of sin theta if the vertical displacement at a it was 0 it starts increasing so as it moves up the horizontal displacement becomes smaller and smaller and smaller the vertical displacement becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger you understand that concept what happens when you reach b the point b i'm writing in red oh i think i should have made this red there so cos is 1 sin is 0 here, cos is 0 and sin is 1 because the vertical displacement is 1. So, we can now conclude that as theta increases from 0 to 90, cos theta decreases from 1 to 0, sin theta increases from 0 to 1. Cos theta, oh, I think I'm going to use color, decreases from 1 to 0. Sin theta increases from 0 to 1. Right? Good. So, I am going to use that later to draw the graphs. What happens as the particle P comes here let's say that's a point p3 that's a point p4 then the angle theta if you have p here that will be the angle theta right let me draw the vertical and horizontal displacements that's the vertical displacement and then that is the horizontal displacement the vertical displacement, not distance, vertical displacement is positive. So, here theta was 90, here theta is 180. So, as the particle moves from B to C, B moves from B01 to C minus 1, 0 theta increases from 90 to 180 degrees. Yeah. Okay. Cos theta is 0 here. When you reach this point, look, this is minus 1, the horizontal displacement, the vertical displacement is 0, meaning 
cos theta starts from 0 goes to minus 1 sin theta starts from 1 goes to 0 so let's put that so cos theta decreases remember when you go the other way decreases from 0 to minus 1 sin theta decreases from 1 to 0 right now what happens as the particle p moves further down suppose i take the particle p here somewhere let's say that is uh, let put this as p4 so that is still one remember the hypotenuse is always one that is your angle theta now your angle theta is more than 180 but less than 270 where in the third quadrant, the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant. Let's look at the vertical displacement. The vertical displacement is negative. The horizontal displacement is still negative. But, <coughs> so cos theta, sorry, cos theta decreases 0 to minus 1. So, cos theta less than 0. In the third case now, so I am writing theta increases from 180 degrees to 270 degrees. Cos theta started at minus 1. Look at this, look at this, the horizontal displacement. Look at the horizontal displacement it is negative the vertical is negative so cos theta starts increasing from minus 1 to 0 cos theta negative increases from minus 1 to 0 sin theta decreases from 0 to minus 1 remember this is 0 color coding so, the horizontal component is 0 or cos is 0, vertical component is negative, minus 1. Good. So, therefore, sin theta, of course, here is positive, here both are positive, uh, positive decreases from 0 to minus 1. Okay. Let me write here what happens as the particle moves to a point somewhere here, let us say P5. I took two points there to illustrate, so now I need only one point, by now you will have picked like this. So, look at the horizontal component and join it to the origin obviously, that distance is always 1 and your angle theta is actually there that is your angle theta, alright. And then the horizontal component is positive because you are to the right of y axis, whereas the vertical component is still negative because it is below the x axis. I think uh, these arrows indicate what kind of signs we have. So, therefore, at P5, so, in other words, as the angle increases from 270 to 360, 270 to 360, the cos value increases from 0 to 1, positive, sine value increases from minus 1 to 0, negative. So, therefore, as P moves or let us straight away go to this, as theta increases from 270 to 360. We have cos theta positive increases from 0 to 1. Sin theta negative decreases from minus 1 to 0. 
So look, it looks as though now, can you imagine them, how the sign curve looks like? 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, cos theta, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. So when you move from 0 to 360, you have both sine and cos graphs. That is how the graphs are denied. Your teachers will have shown you all these things. I'm just going over them. So therefore, using this information, I don't need this. I will draw the, di the diagram later for tan. So I want to just show the graphs of sine and cos. And next lesson, I will talk about tan as well and then go further. So therefore, uh, if I were to draw the graph, uh, I'll draw both on one. So let's say, in other words, as you can see, the values of sine and cos can never go beyond one, can never go below minus one. If this is zero, that is 90, that is 180, I'm looking at one full circle, and 270 and 360. So let's do the cos graph first. Cos is positive. It decreases from 1 to 0. Then cos is negative, decreases from 0 to minus 1. Ah, me and my graphs. Cos is negative, increases from minus 1 to 0. Cos is positive, increases from 0 to 1. Remember this graph of cos, which you did in your GCSE? That is how, in fact, cos and sine are looked up as the displacement, horizontal and vertical displacement of a particle moving on a unit circle. Right. Let's look at sine. It starts at 0 and at 90 it reaches 1 comes to 0, at 270 it reaches minus 1, at 360 comes to 0. I mean, I am not, uh, not drawing a very nice graph, it is a sketch. But let us see what happens after 360. Suppose I want an angle 742. Mathematically it is possible because 360, 720, 22. That is the angle, it goes around the unit circle twice and then comes to the angle of 22 degrees. So, if you have an angle more than 360, the values of sine and cos repeat. That is the reason why your cos graph, if you go further, will go like that. And your sine graph will go like that. Suppose now we take negative values, instead of going this way, I go this way. So, the only thing that will happen is, it is continuous, so using the same graph, it goes like that, and this one goes like that. That is why sine and cos are periodic functions. A periodic function is the values repeat themselves after a certain interval. Later on, I will talk of odd and even functions. Uh, I do not think it is necessary uh, to discuss it at this stage. Later on, I, when I define sometime odd and even functions, when I do integration, odd and even functions might help us reduce our integration areas, finding the um, reduce the work in finding areas. We will look at it then. And then, so the periodic functions and look, cos one particular cycle, that means starting from 0, 1, going to 0, going to minus 1, coming back to 0, going back to 1. One complete oscillation is the period and that happens between 0 and 360. So, cos has a period of 360 degrees. Same way sine, start from 0, goes to 1 comes back to 0, goes to minus 1, comes back, that is you know, like a pendulum, one complete oscillation, 360. So, both sin theta and cos theta have a period of 360 degrees. So, I have discussed 
please remember these things because I am going to come back to them later. So, if you can mentally picture the circle I had drawn in the first quadrant, both cos and sin were positive. In the second quadrant, cos was negative, sin was positive. In the third quadrant, both of them, oops, sin was negative. What did I write? I said sin is negative and wrote sin was positive. Idiot. Not you, me. Both are negative here in the fourth quadrant. So, if I have this, here all ratios are positive. Here, cos is negative, so sin is positive. Later on, you will learn both are negative, so sin over cos. Tan is positive. Here, cos. Of course, uh, it's, it applies to me. All students take coffee. Or all school teachers cheat. That's rude. That's what my teacher told me. But I don't think I would say it is all students take coffee. So you can remember that means any angle between 0 and 90, all are positive. 90 and 180 sine is positive. 180 and 270 tan is positive. 270 and 360 cos is positive. Even if you have a negative angle, 0 and minus 90 cos is positive, minus 90 and minus 180 tan is positive, minus 180 and minus 270 sin is positive, 270 and 360 all are positive, minus 270 and minus 360. Good. I want to stop at that stage. Uh, look, as I told you last time, it's uh, possible. You know, the word, why was it called sin? Why was it as called? Must have had something to do with geometry and the Greek words. Unfortunately, I don't know why. But at least tangent, I should be able to tell you why they use the letter tangent, as I will show you in the next lesson. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Hello. I want to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. I would like to thank Vivid Innovations Private Limited and Commerce Forum for uh, so generously giving up their uh, studio and the facilities and the services of their uh, technicians to record all these videos for free. I think that needs to be acknowledged and appreciated. Thank you very much. And my special thanks to Mr. Nitin Mahadevapa, Mr. Nishant Guruswami, and Mr. Sadan Kumar DN for all their help and assistance in getting these videos ready, uploaded, and launched. Thank you very much.